The Dark Souls video games are known to be difficult. Elden Ring is basically Dark Souls, but for the Elden. So naturally, when most people hit new game on the main menu, they will want to pick the strongest class. Is the strongest class the buff priest guy? What about the sneaky bandit? Or the cool samurai? Yeah, okay, him. It's definitely him, even though Miyazaki himself recommends against it. This is the best class, especially if you know the secret exclusive to it. You are probably asking yourself, why is Big Hat Logan called Big Hat Logan? You are also probably asking yourself, how can the wretch be the strongest class when it starts at level 1? All the other classes start at higher levels. So how in the lands between could the wretch possibly be stronger? It's simple. The wretch has greater starting potential. Let's say you get 20 hours into the game and you realize that your dual wielding whip dominatrix build just isn't working so you decide to respec into a chaste nun build first you go to renala and give her the larval tier to respec but then it happens you see that some of your stats cannot be decreased below a certain number maybe your whip wielding dominatrix build was based on the warrior class so you started with 16 dexterity and 8 faith because the warrior class starts with these stats when reallocating your levels you cannot change anything about these base stats. You will have to spend a lot more levels on your faith stats seeing that you cannot take any away from your dexterity. If you had chosen the wretch class to begin with, this wouldn't be a problem. Look at that stat distribution. The wretch is lean, clean, tens across the board. You can respec into any build, and no matter what, your stats will always be perfectly optimized. Sure, if you played as a whip wielding dominatrix throughout the entire game, starting with extra levels in dexterity would be a good thing. But that is just straight goofy. Your college years are a time for experimentation and trying new things. You can become a new person, maybe go to a Mitski concert or something, throw out those Weezer albums, have sex with men. There are there are three bosses in this game that you can use a shackle item on. It will immobilize them and allow you to get some free hits. This item works because they are wearing clothes. Morgot and Margit are wearing rags that count as clothes, while Moog is wearing robes. If they were completely naked, this shackle item would not work on them. It's in the lore. Therefore, why would you want to wear clothes in Elden Ring? Why would you pick a class that starts with clothing? You don't need it. It only serves as a shackle. Let's take it further. In Dark Souls games, your rolling speed is affected by how much you have equipped. If you have heavy armor and multiple massive weapons equipped, you will barely be able to roll. However, if you are wearing some light armor, your rolling will be faster and more effective. During your rolling animation, you have something called iframes, which represent how many frames during the animation you are completely invincible for. Nothing can damage you during this small window. This is also dependent on your equip load. The faster roll has more iframes than the slower roll, which means it is even easier to evade attacks as you have a larger window. What happens if you take off all your armor then? Embrace your wretched, deprived nature. You get the ultimate roll. You do not dodge enemy attacks. Enemy attacks dodge you. They slide off your sleek, naked form. You are no longer human. You are something more. Something more than a god. Speaking of gods, you should subscribe to my channel. Okay, admittedly, maybe you do want some pants. In my personal experience, it took me 12 hours of playtime to find my first pair of pants. Up until that point, I was wearing no pants. Personally, I don't mind but people would look at me funny. Now to put it simply while also avoiding any spoilers, eventually I picked up this item which caused a bit of a brawl. I'm in danger! A bit of a tussle and I finally looted some pants at this 12 hour mark. Now don't worry, if you are new to the game, you can quite easily acquire pants from many merchants. However, I never bought these pants. The thing is with stores, you cannot trust them. You have no idea where any of the items have been. Carly might say that these pants are brand new, but they could be second hand. They could have been owned by the loathsome dung eater. I also practice this in game and in real life. You should never buy anything for any reason whatsoever. It is much better to just find all of your clothes on the side of the road. You know that they aren't second hand because nobody has worn them before. They have just been sitting on the side of the road waiting for you, their true master. The wretch also has one last secret weapon. This isn't mentioned anywhere in the game, but it is quite a big secret. It has confounded many gaming journalists. If you have ever been outside while in a country with some infrastructure beyond roads, at some point you would have walked past a 
bus stop or a train station. These things are great. You can just go anywhere. Complete freedom. If you are a fan of Pokemon or SMT, you are going to love these places. Just like in those video games where you can collect all kinds of varied creatures through random encounters, you can also have random encounters with crackheads at bus stops. Crackheads main statistical differentiation between themselves is that of innate crackhead energy. Basically every skill can be learnt, but innate crackhead energy cannot be taught. It is an unknowable force that ebbs and flows throughout all beings. Only the chosen few are able to tap into this mystical stream. Innate crackhead energy cannot be learnt. It can only be found. Rust players are probably familiar with this concept. This is the secret of the wretch. It starts with innate crackhead energy. None of the other classes exhibit this strange quality. Through this power, players who choose the wretch become built different. This power allows them to withstand tasers to the face. Choosing the wretch imparts its template upon yourself. The you, residing in reality, that is playing Elden Ring on your Sega Saturn home video game console. You become a crackhead. The wretch is the strongest class in Elden Ring, second to none. Although it's not the first time the naked class has been the strongest in a Dark Souls game, but it hasn't always been this way. In Demon's Souls, they didn't even have a naked class. The best class in that game was Royalty, which started at Soul Level 1. It came with the Fragrant Ring. <laughs> This increased your maximum MP and also added a bit of MP regen. On top of that, you also start with a pretty useful spell. All your stats are fairly even as well. Not as even as the Sovereign and Unassailable Wretch though. You might have noticed something with this class. The progenitor for all the naked classes was literally royalty. All crackheads made in the following games have royal blood flowing in their veins. They also have a lot of other chemicals flowing in their veins. Dark Souls is where the crack begins. It was the first Dark Souls game to have a naked class. However, in this instance, the naked class is kind of bad. It starts at level 6, which is just disgusting. All the other classes start at a lower level. The best class in this game is the Pyromancer. It is quite similar to Royalty, only it is Povo. You start with a Pyromancy Flame and a Pyromancy, while also being at Soul Level 1. I mean, you do start with some clothing, which is kind of disappointing, but fortunately they are disgusting swamp rags, so it's basically on the level of being naked when it comes to crackhead energy. Probably the best thing about the Pyromancer though, is that it ties the Wanderer class for most stat points at soul level 1. Yeah, some classes actually just straight up have more stat points no matter what. For example, the sorcerer at soul level 3 has 82 total stat points, while the pyromancer at soul level 1 has 84. Man, how pathetic is that sorcerer class? You should laugh at it and make it feel bad. If the crack began in Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2 is the Dark Souls of being naked. <laughs> The deprived class in this game is truly the work of the devil. If you are a Christian, it is sixes across the board in every stat, truly the number of the beast. However, if you do not believe in the demonic power of that number, it is actually quite good. This is the first naked class to start at soul level 1. It's quite easy to get any of its stats where you want them for any build, making it better at being a cleric than the cleric. Like mate, the cleric literally starts with free endurance. His endurance is so low that he probably gets winded for a watching the Angry Birds movie 2, which is the critically acclaimed sequel to the critically acclaimed film, The Angry Birds Movie. Dark Souls 2 is probably the best game to be naked in as well. Out of all of the Souls games, this one probably has the most complicated rolling mechanics. The invincibility frames you get during your roll animation are dependent on your agility stat, which is dependent on your adaptability stat or your attunement stat. Of course, you have no idea how to interpret these numbers and have to look up what each stat equates to frame-wise. It is actually legitimately good game design that everyone loves to deal with whenever they play Dark Souls 2. A true stroke of genius. Now in terms of being naked, your roll distance is actually affected by your weight. In other Souls games, if you reach the equip load breakpoint, you will just yo mama roll because you are so heavy, and your mother is really heavy because she is fat. The speed of the roll is determined the same way in Dark Souls 2, but the distance can scale separately based on the individual equip load number. To summarize all this for people who do not have a PhD in Dark Souls, to naked rolling aerodynamics, you go better with no clothes in Dark Souls 2. Therefore, the deprived class has no downside. Fortunately, Dark Souls 3 reverted the absolute prostate cancer that is Dark Souls 2 rolling. Polk state, if you're a zoomer, being naked in Dark Souls 3 is still beneficial, but not as beneficial as it was in Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 3 also has a good deprived class. 
The stats are all 10s and it starts at soul level 1. This is all pretty good. However, it's not actually naked, which might seem weird because it kind of looks naked, but that is actually a separate item called loincloth and it makes you more naked than if you were just naked. So out of all classes across the franchise, this is the most naked, despite not being naked. You only start to understand the deprived class of Dark Souls 3 when you read its description. Naked and of unknown origin. Either an unfathomable fool in life, or was stripped of possessions upon burial. I think we all know which class we can relate to the most in Dark Souls 3. Bloodborne is quite different to the other games when it comes to picking a starting class. First, the game is basically drip -born. Armor doesn't really matter at all in terms of protection. There is an equip load system in Bloodborne, but it doesn't really affect anything at all. For example, there are no tears of rolls at all. It's all just... <laughs> In Bloodborne, being naked confers no tactical advantage whatsoever. It becomes a pure intimidation tactic. Don't say you wouldn't be scared if you saw a naked man from Victorian England running your ass down. It sounds like the perfect class to pick for this game, right? Okay, I need you to sit down for this one. There is actually no naked class in this game. The closest class is Waste of Skin, which starts at level 4 instead of level 10. It's honestly really tragic. A small bit of advice if you decide to play the previous Dark Souls games. Right now the servers are down, you can still play them fine, but... Whenever you boot up Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3, it tries to connect to the server. It takes ages, and you can't cancel it. You just have to sit there. And when it fails to connect, a retry prompt appears, and it defaults to OK. So if you press it like a brain dead zombie, you have to sit through the failing to connect screen again. When you are tired of the game and you want to quit, you go back to the main menu and it tries to connect again before you can even press quit game. I love From Software. You might be tempted to pick a class like Astrologer or Confessor because of how they start with spells or incantations respectively. The thing is though, Wretch can work perfectly fine for these caster builds. Sure, it doesn't start with any spells or incantations, but it is really easy to get them in Elden Ring. The Astrologer class does start with Glint Stone Pebble and Glint Stone Arc. Glint Stone Pebble is pretty good for a crappy starter spell, while Glint Stone Arc is a crappy starter spell. None of this really matters though, because quite early on, you can find Selen and just buy them from her, or skip them and get the better versions. You don't really have to go looking for her as well. She is quite close to where the game starts. Confessor on the other hand starts with absolutely awful incantations. Assassin's Approach makes your footsteps silent, which is useful in some very specific circumstances. However, you will probably forget that you have it whenever those circumstances arise. Urgent Heal is just stupid. It doesn't feel urgent when you use it in battle, and it heals basically nothing. You get so many bootleg Estus flasks in this game that there is no real use for this. The armor for the class is cool though. Conf Confessor starts at level 10, which makes it less flexible in terms of starting levels when compared to the wretch. I would advise you just start as a wretch and pump your first 10 levels into faith or something like that. Confessor is still a good start in the direction of a faith build though, so don't feel bad if you picked it. Or do feel bad. Cry. Throw a tantrum. Now with all this said, what is the final recommendation for Elden Ring? If you have no idea what kind of build you want to use in Elden Ring, wretch is a good class, as it can be anything if you decide to respec, and it isn't actually that weak compared to the other classes. However, if you have already beaten the game and know exactly what type of character you want to use for an entire playthrough, the more specialized classes can be a good pick. Off the back of my last video, I managed to hit 10,000 subscribers. To celebrate this milestone, I thought I would have a fun little event. For this event, I am going to end racism, reverse climate change, cure cancer. You should subscribe to my channel. It would look great on your resume.